fertilizer. And so if you have St. Augustine grass and then you, you start to see those brown spots in there, you go out and you can do a, a chinch bug test. You take a, a soup can or something and you uh, get a bucket or a, a, a pitcher, you put some soapy water in there and you'll put that in the middle of your grass, kind of push it down and then you pour that uh, soapy water in and then the bugs bubble up and you can see how many critters are in your yard. It's kind of cool to, to play with it like that. Um, and so one of the important things, takeaway messages that I hope you all get is never fertilize before a rain event. Now, if you think about how much it rains every day in Florida, it just seems almost impossible for that to be followed by a lot of these, uh, these fertilizer companies because I think they go out in the morning and they have a list of places they gotta go and, and if it rains then I'm not sure, I think it percolates down or it runs off. That's a big problem. So the spreader. And the spreader can throw from 12 to 15 feet. Uh, so in the extension, what we used to do is we set out a big tarp and you would walk across and you could see how far the, the, the fertilizer was thrown. And you see it, why you have to do the crisscross pattern is because each, as far there that it goes, it's, Similar to irrigation too, the less at the edges, the more in the front. So if you do the crisscross pattern, 12 foot swap, go up and down your yard, and then back and forth. And I've got a good picture in a little bit to show you on that one. There's the picture. This person uh, over fertilized. You can see that <laughs> it burnt their yard in that pattern there. Uh, this guy, you know, I really don't think he really did that. <laughs> um, and then also a lot of people don't realize that when you spill fertilizer, it's really important to sweep it up and to either put it back in the bag or to put it onto the turf grass and spread it out. And you can see here where sometimes if you stop with your spreader, you get a drop. And those, those burns, that fertilizer burn is really hard. Again, you have another brown spot in your yard trying to figure out is it water, is it bugs, is it fungus, or is it fertilizer problems? So uh, do, the, do, the, do the organic ones burn less than the inorganic, or are they fungus? They burn less, yes. They burn less, okay. Because it's, it's not that quick right. release type slower. So what damages turf grass? Weather, drought, excessive rainfall, um, sunlight. If you don't have more than six hours of sunlight, it's really hard. A lot of those beautiful oak trees, you see people always trying to grow grass under that. And, and a lot of homeowners associations, it's really difficult because, you know, do you cut down your trees so you can grow grass or do you try an alternative ground cover? And, and the way tree roots are, if it's an established tree, you know that it's not easy to, to dig in mm -hmm. to do some of those plantings. But once you were to plant those areas, it, it can with the Asiatic jasmine or some of the, um, the plants that I suggested for shade. So six hours of light, and what we suggest you do is go out and do a sun study. And so you get up in the morning, you get a piece of paper out, you say, okay, the sun's on the east side and it sets in the west. So you say, okay, one o'clock, eight o'clock it's here, nine o'clock it's there, and you kind of follow it and you can kind of see a pattern and then it changes over the year. But generally, if you've got six hours, most of the time it's gonna do you pretty well with growing it. Uh, there's a lot of nutritional de deficiencies. That's why a lot of people fertilize. Cultural practices, um, that has to do with the way you mow, the way you water, and then the type of grass you have. And of course, there's so many insects that really love to eat grass. Now, one of the insects that the people really kind of freak out about is tropical sod webworm. And if you've ever walked across your yard, you see all those little moths flying around? Well, they were little caterpillars. They were the sod webworms at one time, but they don't eat a whole lot. So you don't really have to whip out the arsenal and then you know spray, because those little moths really are a food source for a lot of other animals, and they really aren't harming anything. They're not gonna get in your house, they're not gonna eat your clothing, and they're not gonna do damage to your yard once they're past the larval form and they become the moths. They're just kind of just the little critters that live in your yard. The lizard Yes. Because I have so many <laughs> lizards, and when I was weeding my uh, bed up front, the moths just kind of floating up. And then lately it's just been like herds of lizards all over. Yeah, it's very much, 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 much. I think the, the lizards have 
There are excellent mulching mowers as well because I bought a, a snapper 25 years ago. Still burn. Yeah. But it's got that. Uh, it's got a double blade on yeah, that thing, and oh god, it does it. No, that, that's pretty instant fertilizer in some of Yeah. So um, I work for the St. John's Riverkeeper. I'm so glad to give you this information tonight, and we're a 501c3, privately funded, um, and we have 266 water keepers in the around the world and in florida we have 14 groups of water keepers um, our our water our st john's river keeper she is the, the in charge of that organization right now they have a, a like a group of water keepers that meet and are working on big problems around the state uh, our mission of course is to be an independent voice that defends and advocates and activates others to protect and restore the river and all water bodies in our watershed um, and also the 300 water keepers worldwide and up in or down in the lower basin you know the St. John's River is 310 miles long and down in the lower basin they have uh, some boats and things associated with the Jacksonville University that are assigned to the river keepers. So they have a lot of patrolling going on. They've been having a lot of dredging lately. They're widening the canals down there. And so they look for things like turbidity, uh, which is when the soil, when you're, when you're dredging, the organic material gets into the water column and it just takes out all the light and then the sun can't penetrate down through the water column and, it, and harm the, the plant life and the, and the fish change the oxygen levels. Um, so we educate youth and adults and everybody we can. And this is our river keeper, Lisa Reinerman. She's an awesome lady. She does a lot of work for us. Thank you, Lisa. And we do education programs. I'm going to be working with the schools. We're going to try to get a program in the land of getting um, some kids out on the river. We're aiming for fifth graders. We're starting, hopefully, a pilot project in Deltona. We're going to get them out on Blue Springs and, and get them to see the water and fall in love with it and be advocates for it and, and do good things. We have a lot of booths. We have a boat trip coming up on uh, November 7th and 8th, an eco tour to start up in Sanford area and we'll go to Astor and you'll spend the night out on um, Lake uh, Bairdsford and some of those resorts there. Um, so that's something that's coming up and uh, we're going to, next year we're going to get a young, younger people's type of a, maybe uh, kayaking and camping out at Hantoon Island. We've talked about doing some of that. 
Also, I have monthly cleanups, and in the back, um, we have a sheet, a list of, of um, going out on the river, either you can bring your own kayak uh, right now, and, or just do some shoreline cleanups. So love to have, have you guys out doing work for the river and for us. And upcoming workshops, of course, today, I've got a really fun one coming up about bee, bees, native bees. There's over 320 varieties of, of native bees that you can even believe and make 70% of them burrow in the ground. So it's okay to have some open space in your yard with just sand and things to allow those critters to, to do their life cycle and such. Um, but we're going to be making these bee boxes for, for um, mason bees and they uh, lay their eggs in there so you get power tools and, and education and we'll have a lot of fun. It's a fundraiser for the River Cooper. Um, also, I'm gonna do a rain barrel workshop. We're gonna do painting on the rain barrels. We uh, are gonna have a fee for that too. And then in the fall, I'd like to do aquascaping and rain gardens. So we need to get some plantings on our waterways. And um, rain gardens are little spots where you know the way the pitch of your roof runs that you know that that water just runs out into the street, so it's trying to capture that runoff and to kind of have a nice garden. They're, they're labor intensive and you do have to clean them out. They get kind of filled with plants, so it's, if you're not a gardener, you might want to hire someone to do one, but it's interesting to learn about. And uh, I went through it kind of fast and I know you might have questions, but um, I'm available. My office is right up the street here and I love to um, talk about fertilizers and all these things and try to get people to do things better. Because there's a lot of people who love grass and as much as the environmental community would like to see grass go away, I don't believe it's gonna happen because more people want grass. So my goal is to make people grow grass better and to teach them these things and it's really hard to do that. So we might have to be creative and use you guys as a baseline in the future is trying to figure out ways we can solve these solutions, you know, solve these problems a little differently because what we're doing isn't working very well. We need to do commercials or we need to do something. I don't know, but really appreciate it. Contact information there. And that's it. Thank you.